Welcome back everybody. So in this video I'll show you what's usually referred to as local polynomial regression. And that is just a combination of the ideas from the previous two videos. So let's see what we can do here. The idea here is just to combine these two approaches. So we fit polynomials to the data, but we do so locally. And for that we use the weights to only really use points close to where we are looking at the moment for the polynomial. So let's make a sketch. So let's assume we have data like this. So x is here, y is here, and we, as before, want to find the mean function. Let's say we want to do so at that point x, which I want to call x twiddle here. So what we did before was we just fixed a window, and then we had weight, so maybe it was not a sharp cutoff, but basically we averaged the y values of everything inside the window, maybe counting the ones in the middle stronger. And then the average was what we call the Nadaraya Watson estimator. And what I want to do here instead is I want to fit a polynomial. Say we could fit a parabola here, which may look like that. And we use weights to make it so that the points here strongly affect the shape of the parabola. And the further away points like these and these have no effect or negligible effect. So the parabola is really only meant to describe the data in the vicinity of x twiddle. But you see a parabola here can actually fit this shape and notice that we are at a peak. So to fix the location of the parabola, we can use it points which are already a bit down from the peak and they contribute something to the fit. Whereas for the Nadaraya Watson estimator, these points where the mean looks like it's lower than the maximum, they introduce the bias. Whereas here, they may still help us to locate the parabola more accurately. And what we do then is the value of the parabola at x twiddle, this point here will be our new estimator. So that here is what we call m hat h of x twiddle, once we have written it all down. And the advantage of this approach is just before for the Nadaraya Watson estimator at the peak, we needed to choose the bandwidth relatively small so that it, the estimate is not pulled down by the lower values to the left and the right. Whereas here we can get away with choosing the bandwidth a bit larger. And that gives more accurate estimates and lower variance in the estimates because more points are involved in the averaging. So that's the idea. Let's see how we can do that. So first thing we need is the weights. And there, you can already guess, we do exactly the same thing as for the Nadaraya Watson estimator. So WI, we do KH X twiddle minus XI, where XI are the X coordinates of the given data points. And the effect of this is that we count samples close to X twiddle, where we are computing the estimate strongest, and far away samples have only very little effect. Then we fit the polynomial estimate. So we use our design matrix as before. So we do 1 x1 minus x twiddle x1 minus x twiddle square. And here I do second order, but of course you can continue it to get polynomials of any degree you want. And then the next row is x2 minus x twiddle x2 minus x twiddle squared and so on. And the last row is xn minus x twiddle xn minus x twiddle squared. And again, like I discussed in the previous section, we would not really need to subtract x twiddle here. We could just fit a parabola using x1 and x1 squared and so on. But if you look at this picture, that's the region we are interested in. So if we fit the parabola as coordinates relative to the origin, that looks a bit awkward. And as I showed to you, it also can make the matrix more collinear and subtracting it can improve numerical stability of the method by getting matrices with smaller condition number. Good, so that is x. And that is w, and then we need to just do it. So then we do, as before, beta hat is x transpose w x inverse, x transpose w y. And now the only thing we need to do is we need to work out how do we get this point. And for that, we need to remember fitted values. So here is the formula where we discussed this. 
So what we need to do is we need to write x transpose beta hat, where x transpose is a vector which looks like a row of the design matrix corresponding to the x twiddle we want. Now our rows of the design matrix look like this. We have a 1, then input minus x twiddle, and then input minus x twiddle squared. And if you look at that, if we plug in x equals x twiddle, something special happens. So let's first write the general formula. So at x we have 1 x minus x twiddle x minus x twiddle squared times beta hat 0, beta hat 1, beta hat 2, which is, we have seen, beta hat 0 plus beta hat 1 x minus x twiddle plus beta hat 2 x minus x twiddle squared. Good, and now I hinted at this already, we need x equals x twiddle, and then this goes away, because x minus x twiddle is 0, that goes away. So what we get is just beta hat 0. So our estimate is m hat h x twiddle is, I just write it in words for extra clarity, fitted value at x equals x twiddle is beta hat 0. And beta hat is here, so what we can do is we can, if we really want to use matrix notation, we can use some trick and write a vector here which picks out the first or rather the zeros component. Or we can just compute that thing and then take the zeros component. If you want the notational trick, beta hat 0 is E0 transpose and then this vector x transpose w x inverse x transpose w y where E0 is 1, 0, 0 in Rp plus 1, which has a 1 in the correct spot to pick out the index 0 coefficient. So we can write our estimator as this. Good, so that looks actually quite tidy. The only complication is there are x twiddles hidden in this calculation, so there are x twiddles in the W, there are x twiddles in the design matrix. So when we compute the thing, both W and X depend on which point we are looking at. So if we want to draw a regression curve that may look like this, then what we need to do is we need to go through this procedure for points on a grid. So we do that for lots of X twiddle values. So we need to solve lots of linear systems which look like this. So that can be computationally a bit slow, but in practice, I never found it slow enough that it actually caused the problems. It's still, when you do it in R, the answer comes out instantaneously, I found. Good, and this is local polynomial regression, and that is quite a popular method for doing smoothing. Though, if you want to estimate the mean function for a cloud of points, I believe that is a very good method. There is one parameter, well, there are two parameters you need to choose. You need to choose the bandwidth. And I talked a bit about this here. You can choose the bandwidth a bit larger than you would for the Nadaraya Watson estimator. But again, that is a difficult topic, so I'm not going to discuss this here in any detail. And the other thing you need to choose is this parameter P. And I want to just very quickly make a few comments. So the smallest possible case, in a sense, is p equals 0. Then we would have y equals beta 0, no more terms. A degree 0 polynomial is a constant, plus epsilon. And if you go through the algebra, you will find that gives you back the Nadaraya Watson estimator. I show you the algebra in the notes, so please have a look there to look that up. For p equals 1, something new happens, because now y is beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus epsilon, and that allows us to model the slope of the local mean. And that has an advantage, for example, if your data looks like this, then in the left-hand boundary, the Nadaraya Watson estimator will do something like this. Because if you're here and say the bandwidth is that, then you're averaging all of these points. But 
because there's nothing to the left, I'm assuming we are at the boundary, then most of these points are larger than what we think should the mean be, and then the estimate comes out somewhere there. So what happens is, on boundaries, if the slope is upwards, the mean is too large, so the Nadaraya watson estimator has a positive bias. And if you use p equals 1, the estimator can correct for that, because it will just fit a straight line to this data, and locally they look like a straight line. So the mean will go down all the way to the edge, and to solve this kind of problem, p equals 1 is enough. And there is a similar effect for p equals 2. Namely here our model for the local polynomials is y is beta 0 plus beta 1 x plus beta 2 x squared plus epsilon and that corresponds to parabolas and it turns out that local extremas so if I don't know if there's some peak and the data gives you a noisy picture of this peak then both the Nadaraya Watson estimator and the estimator for p equals 1, if you are at the peak, so let's say we are looking at that window, then you are either fitting just a straight line to these points, or you are allowing for a slope, but at the peak it's kind of symmetric, so having a slope doesn't help and the result will still be, the local fit will still be a straight line. And then for that value we get this value, so we have a negative bias. And that is fixed by using p equals 2, namely there we fit a parabola and even if then the data goes flat or I don't know what or there are other peaks, locally a parabola is good for describing a peak, so we can get the estimate all the way to this point up here and for peaks the bias of the p equals 2 case is lower than it is for p equals 1 or the Nadaraya Watson estimator. And I've not seen any applications for larger p but I imagine for special cases that may be a good idea too. What I have done always was using p equals 2. That makes it a bit slower than p equals 1 or Nadaraya Watson, but I like the effect that at local extrema you get a reasonable estimate with low bias because the local polynomials can kind of fit the shape of a peak if it's reasonably roundish. Good, so that is local polynomial regression. And this is also the end of this section. So I'll see you again in a few days. And for now, I'll say goodbye. Bye-bye.